Hello there, Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. How are you wherever you are in the world when you're watching a huge shout out to you? Mercury retrograde is rearing its uh, head here because I thought I was recording a 35-minute record uh, astrology and tarot reading and I just lost I wasn't I wasn't recording anyway I am now let's go over what I uh, thought I had already been going over today I want to look at let's just bring me in today I want to look at uh, Joe Biden's natal chart and what I've done which is the blue here and what I've done is I've looked at the transits uh, in Washington DC on the 5th of November uh, at around 10.30 p.m. Uh, in America, uh, in Washington, D.C., you should know or have some sort of indication that um, of where the election is going and how it's going. Now, I want to concentrate here on what's good about this chart uh, before I get into uh, into what what are the, the, the challenges and the conflicts um, and the opposing forces. Um, now, the transiting, um, the transits here on the 5th of November, it's it's not an election forecast. It's just looking at the energy as it relates to Joe Biden on that evening. I guess if you wanted to look more closely at what might be going on in swing states, they would be separate charts. But I'm just looking for major themes here. Now, what figures are here to me, this is where I'll start, is natal uh, Uranus and transiting Uranus. They're in the sixth house, uh, which is, uh, well, transiting uh, Ur Uranus is in Gemini here, still in the sixth house, but, tran uh, sorry, natal. Transiting Uranus is in Taurus in the sixth house. Sixth house is all about work, health, day-to-day -day, uh, day -day routines, and also sacrifice as well. Transiting Uranus, the um, the rapid change, the lightning change, things coming out of the blue, is sextiling transiting Mars in Leo in the eighth house. Now Mars is the planet of action. Uh, the eighth house here is around beginnings and endings and transformations. And in Leo, this is an expression. There will be things that will surprise you about the 2024 election in a good way because this is about taking action against the opposing forces, sometimes unseen, whether that's international or domestic, that come to bear on our politics. And there's a, a harmonious flow here. Up to that, up to that transiting Mars in Leo. Uh, this is an expression of, I want to say, an expression of the need to bring something to a close. Now, what are, what is this expression here? I already know because I, I did I did the reading before, <laughs> but this is about bringing Trump's era to a close once and for all. And even though you'll see those stories in the uh, in the, the major press about a dictatorship, everybody's fearful of that, designed to uh, really to to make us fearful. You never really see that balance coming through. Going well, it's got all these authoritarian tendencies. He will once he gets in, he will never get out again. He's going to take away your liberties and your freedoms, but. How realistic is it? He was whooped in 2022. He lost in 2020. He lost in 2018. The only time he's won is in 2016 when he was just this radical, what appeared radical, uh, dynamite-type figure from New York that, yes, New Yorkans knew what he was like, but... Others just saw him as celebrity apprentice and a healthy change for democracy. Well, look how that worked out. Transiting uh, Uranus is, looks like, uh, let's see. No, I want to go to natal Uranus 
is uh, sextiling uh, his natal Jupiter in Cancer. So he's able to calm people down. Uh, you know, that's essentially it, who he is. Uh, and people need a lot of calming down. We see uh, transiting Mars here trining his the essence of who Biden is, his sun and Venus in that 12th house. The 12th house very much is about endings, ending old cycles. Uh, it's about, it can be about spiritualism too. Uh, and the unconscious. And so that that there is an expression. I'm not going to say of spiritual uh, spiritual spirituality here uh, on the fifth, but it's like something higher happens for the higher good. We see uh, also a trine from his natal Pluto, which is on the ascendant, right down to the ascendant in, in Sagittarius. That has to be a good thing. Sagittarius in that first house, his chart is not dissimilar to uh, America's. Uh, we see Sagittarius here on the ascendant. Uh, Sagittarius is about higher order. It is about logic. It is about uh, the law. Uh, it is about new horizons. It's about truth telling. And it's on the ascendant here and there's a trine from his natal Pluto in Leo. Expression. He's very good at calling out, calling out what's wrong with the other side. Even though he's had that stutter, when he rises to the occasion, he can speak very powerfully. And so does this first house here, Mercury, communication, Pallas Athena, goddess of justice, Venus, love, some say in Vedic astrology, the star of destiny, all in Sagittarius. Uh, does that sound Sagittarius, the truth-telling, higher, higher order, logic, philosophy? Does that sound like Trump wins? I don't, don't, don't think I would put those, um, those words with him. But anyway. Anyway, okay, so we get his natal uh, transiting Mars again. There's a lot about Mars and Pluto in this chart, uh, which is a volatile combination, sextiling his natal uh, natal um, Neptune in Libra, and that is in the 10th house, the public. He does need to call out what is unjust. And, of course, that is almost conjunct the transiting Vesta. Vesta, goddess Vesta, uh, was ruled the hearth and home in that 10th house. And if I had to have a slogan, it's like if you elect the GOP, your home, family, way of life and your freedoms are not guaranteed. And we see a lot of accent there on uh, on justice. And, of course, we see that natal Neptune trining, transiting Pluto in Capricorn at the 29th degree, so potent at that degree. And so justice, what's Neptune, what is coming into form? Justice, trining, transiting Pluto, exposing corruption. So he has a lot of headwind in this chart and he has a lot of wind at his back as well. We see his essence of who he is, his Scorpio sun and Venus, sorry, Venus, yes, Venus. Uh, they're all uh, trining, uh, transiting Neptune in Pisces. He has a role here to call out the insanity, to call out the misinformation, to advocate an anchor for stability. He has that role. And it's it's to do with whether America descends into some sort of, I don't know, it's not, it's, it's, it's a madness, really. Um, divided, um, polarised, misinformed, uh, where nothing good gets done under those circumstances. All that happens is regression and loss of freedom. He has a role here 
in making sure that doesn't happen. And uh, transiting um, Saturn is in the third house of communication along with Vesta there in Aquarius and Pallas Athena there in Aquarius. The many, the many working hard to reach people at their most basic intuitive level so that they understand what is at stake in this election. The transiting north node here is trining his natal Pluto. That is excellent, excellent. It's almost like destiny is there. Destiny is there that he will be. Now, I'm not saying that he's the, the new era. I'm saying he has a role, a very karmic role to play in with this Pluto at the 29th degree of Capricorn exposing corruption, moneyed corruption, money corruption. He has a role in putting a, a boundary, a container around that so that America doesn't descend into a corrupt authoritarian oligarchy, much like Russia. He has a role in containing that. But it's not going to be easy. So we see some uh, grand trines. We also see some T-squares here. Let's take a look at... Where do we want to go? Well, what's going to be difficult about this? So we get the transiting Pluto uh, squaring his natal moon. And the moon, the transiting Pluto and the natal moon, natal moon can be uh, can be uh, feelings and emotions and expression. I think he's going to get a lot thrown at him by the uh, big, the big, what do I say, moneyed interests. And if this isn't Trump standing and it's Nikki Haley, they're going to, those billionaire funders of Nikki Haley, they're going to play hard. They're absolutely going to play hard. And it, it's it's ex something to do with his expression. They may dredge up things that he said in the past and use that against him. They may dredge up things now that he said and use that against him. And they're going to hit hard because there is also a square here from that, his natal moon, uh, right up to transiting Mars. And so he's just going to be hit hard. Now, I would say also they're coming for his family in, in, a, in a very debauched way. That will be very, very hard for him to... Um, I think to bear we have transiting uh, Saturn squaring his natal Saturn in Gemini in the third house so a lot of this is going to be about misinformation and also misinformation on the vast vastness that is social media how do you counteract that how do you counteract that you can't very difficult you're relying on the sanity of many human beings to many voters so he has to use that he has to step up and use be very assertive in his in his campaigning has transiting new, uh, jupiter in gemini in his seventh house he's going to ha have a lot of good partnerships that are going to help him there's an expansion there. The seventh house is about partnerships, networks, uh, and so that's that's a good. Jupiter is a benefic. Um, she is very, very expansive. The seventh house can also be open enemies as well, uh, but with his Saturn there, he works hard already. Uh, he can be, as I've said in the past, one step ahead of his enemies. Now we have this uh, natal Uranus and it is opposite the ascendant. Uh, and so 
there's going to be a lot. It's like a tug of war. Oppositions are like a tug of war. He's got a lot of international events uh, that come out of the blue, things that weren't planned on. That's going to continue. I talked about the gruelling task for the Biden-Harris administration to broker uh, humanitarian pauses and I hope ceasefires in Gaza, bring Hamas to justice, release, get those hostages released, work toward a longer-term solution. He's got all of that next year. And so his challenge is to work with good policy, good people, good partnerships behind him to bring in this new, this Sagittarius new dawn, this new horizon. So he's not the the new that we'll see under Pluto in Aquarius for the next 20, 20 years. He is what puts the container around regression an oligarchy, authoritarian oligarchy. He puts his job, that's why he's here, is to do that for a second term and open the way for younger, more younger presidents to come through. And I think he will do that. Okay, so uh, we have also, uh, again, as I said, so transiting Uranus, and it is opposite his sun and uh, Venus. So, yeah, changes, lightning changes could even be, uh, I'm not going to say he has some health problems. I don't think so because um, I see here that uh, Hygie, which is the goddess of um, health, is not in the eighth house, eighth house in his um, in his natal chart. It's in the ninth house. What actually makes Joe Biden, uh, I guess, what takes a toll on Joe Biden, is all this division, all this misinformation, and it is around his expression. If I, we go back into his early life and his stuttering, and his self confidence, he's had to work very hard on that. And I see transiting Hygieia here in the fifth house, uh, again, of expression. So I don't think that, I mean, had transiting Hygieia been in the eighth house, for example, or even here in his twelfth house or the first house, I might have thought, yes, he's, uh, he's, he's not going to be, you know, well. But whatever happens here, these lightning changes, more have to do with the way that he works. Um, and uh, he'll have to, in his second term, be very conscious of, of working in a way that doesn't put his health in, in jeopardy. And, uh, you know, maybe taking a little bit more time, uh, maybe uh, handing a bit more over to Kamala Harris, who knows. The sun here is in Scorpio on the 5th. I love that. It's in his sign and it's in, looks like it's, uh, what is it? Is it just in the on the cusp of the 11th and 12th house? And again, very close to his Mars. Um, and there is, there is action here. I, you know, people think that they're not going to get behind Joe Biden by the time we reach critical, uh, critical timelines in relation to 2024, they will. I do have to mention the inconjunct from transiting Pluto. That's uh, an incompatibility up to his ninth, uh, his north node. And uh, looks like, yeah, his north node and Chiron in the ninth house. So I don't think any of this is pleasant for him. Uh, when I say pleasant, I don't think, you know, I, I, I for one shudder sometimes that I, when I see headline after headline after headline on corruption, whether it's my, the Speaker of the House blurring January the 6th rioters' faces so they don't get charged, whether it's Hunter Biden um, and his payments, paying his father back for a truck uh, that he needed when he was broke, uh, this fake impeachment when there's no evidence. They, these do take a toll. Uh, and it's hard for him to know how to counteract, as I say, so much the magnitude 
of misinformation, polarisation, cultural divide. It's an insanity. It's very hard for him to, to counteract that. And I don't know how any of us counteract that. We have here the moon, volatile emotions in conjunct with his transit in Pluto. So, yeah, it is around his emotions and expression. That's his Achilles heel. But I just looking at these general transits on at 10.30 p.m. on in Washington, D.C., this isn't a Trump pre presidency. Uh, I don't doubt Trump will be uh, in the limelight somehow. If he's even if he's in jail, he'll be in the limelight somehow, turning everything to his benefit. But I don't see this as a Trump victory. I do not. I see it's a Biden victory in the last vestiges of the Pluto and Capricornian age, moving then as we move forward into. Uh, into Aqu the Aquarian age or Pluto and Aquarius. And it's interesting that Joe Biden in his natal chart has Vesta and Pallas Athena in Aquarius in the second and third house. Vesta, the home, Pallas Athena, justice. And I think in many ways what he's fighting for in himself is fighting for everybody else as well because Vesta is up here in Libra, justice with Neptune, bringing something into form in the 10th house, making sure that the lifestyles, the liberties that Americans have taken, to grant, taken for granted are not lost in this age of MAGA insanity, insanity and it is just that. All right, so uh, let's stop that share and uh, let's look at, Let's look at um, let's look at Trump. I have already pulled these cards. He got terrible cards. Um, I didn't even think he would be the the candidate. What was very obvious is that women come out on mass again to defeat him. I think I pulled two queens in the outcome position. Um, okay, Trump will he win the twenty twenty four election? Will Trump win the 2024 election? Will Trump win the 2024 election? Let's just give these another shuffle and cut them. Trump 2024. Will Trump win the 2024 election? Will Trump win the 2024 election? Okay, so people are looking for stability and reliability. That's in the chart as well. And they want to move on. Uh, there's a healing that's needed. Uh, they're the two signifier cards. What's at the base of the pack here? The Ten of Pentacles. This is there uh, again. This is can be big money. It can be legacies, superannuation investments, family uh, family heritage that is handed down. Um, I think that the the economics. And I see that in that chart, the Pluto there in the second house at 29 degrees. Many are worried about the economy. However, indicators say the economy are actually quite good, just as a lot of the aid to Ukraine is manu you know, weapon manufacturing, which provides jobs in America. So it's like people don't understand the nuances. They say they're... Big Mac costs them $14 or whatever it is. Who knows how much the Big Mac costs. But they don't really understand what is a an atrocious economy. An atrocious economy is they can't afford to eat. We've just come off the back of COVID and supply chain uh, issues, driving up the cost of goods and real estate as well, rentals. It's like uh, it became a buyer's, uh, uh, a seller's market. And because it put the, the clinch onto a lot of supply. Okay, so uh, we see the 10 of uh, wands in the past. Too much baggage, too much baggage. We get the three of uh, cups here. We get celebrations, circles of support. And then we get weariness, the nine of wands here, battle weary, uh, the need, need for guardrails. 
we get magician, man, man, manipulation and manifestation, and then we get, this was the outcome card in the re other reading. Um, I actually think that Nikki Haley will be the candidate. I think Trump will actually be in prison by the time we get to 20, the 2024 election or ha house arrest or whatever they're going to do with him. I see uh, Nikki Haley there. We get the lawmakers, the courts in the hopes and fears, and we get a new start. Okay, so people are looking for a new start clarified by lies and deceit and misinformation, and there he is possibly in prison. Loss. Loss. This can be all, you know, things like, I don't know, loss, Jupiter's wheel changing, abuse of power. I'll draw some clarifying cards. And abuse of the presidency as well. So uh, the full card clarified by the Seven of Swords and the Eight of Swords. I have to laugh. I have to laugh. And here she is again. Now the two queens have come back. There's a female prosecutor here, uh, but it's also logic and it's women. Um Okay, so let's have a look. The full card, yes, no, no, and then we get the Queen of Swords. What's the next major arcana? And retreat, ill health, and moderation. Moderation is the next major arcana. So no, these cards don't look good. Uh, we get the um, two of cups reversed. Um, so deals, commitments um, are lost. Okay, will Trump win the 2024 election? People want a new start. There'll be a lot of celebrations after this victory for Biden. People want that new start. Will Trump win the 2024 election? Show me clearly, please. Okay, two cards have come out. We get justice and the three of pentacles, just as I thought. Uh, many are working uh, toward bringing him to justice. We get anxiety, a lot of anxiety here. Will he win the 2024 election? Can you show me, please? One more. Will he win? Illusion, delusion. There's that Neptune. Neptune in Libra. Neptune in Pisces. But Saturn there as well. And we get hope. Hope coming through here. I'm just going to ask, will he be, um, there's the Supreme Court. I do actually think I got a vision of the Supreme Court the other day. They will play a role, whether it's deciding on the uh, election, if it's Haley and, and Biden, maybe it goes to the Supreme Court. Maybe what I'm seeing is the Supreme Court rules that Trump's ineligible. All right, so will Trump be in prison in 2024 or under house arrest? Will Trump be in prison or under house arrest? I kid you not, endings and beginnings, major endings of cycles. And there we get the double, uh, the double clarification there. Will Trump be in prison by or under house arrest? Is this the end for Trump? Okay, he's defending himself. He's uh really cut down to size here, and we get disappointment. The Queen of Wands and the Hermit, isolation. Yeah, I, I've always got he'll be sort of like under house arrest at Mar-a-Lago, the courts, uh, and we get isolated. What's underneath here, the truth. It's pretty, pretty. Pretty, what can I say? Fragmented, disappointing energy in the US at the moment, but I do see more temperance and moderation coming through and the light of awareness. You will be surprised by just how roundly he will be defeated. However, I do say this, there is skullduggery afoot. I will look more closely at the January 6th inauguration. Uh, we'll take a, another look, but maybe look at Biden. Uh, chart there maybe Haley's chart I don't know um but look that's the reading that I promised by the way the UN has invoked United Nations has invoked article 99 a very rare article that's been invoked 
they want the security count it forces the security council to look at humanitarian ceasefire in gaza and so um i hope to goodness that that happens hostage those hostages that were released were shouting at netanyahu uh that they their interests their lives were not prioritized they they were being shelled uh by the israeli bombs uh and they're shouting at him after all the trauma they've been through uh so let's not take um let's not take sides here let's take the side of what is right and that's the end to uh the end to the mass killing in gaza the mass destruction the mass humanitarian um disaster let's end that let's get the hostages home in a brokered uh negotiation like we normally would do and um yeah and let's bring hamas to justice the hamas terrorists who carried out the october 7th attack and any other israelis who have been guilty of crimes on the west bank or anywhere else in gaza let's focus on peace sanity and justice all right that's it for now um i hope you enjoyed the reading bye for now